Hey there, it's your boy Foxy, back for more relationship stories. Update, today I, 45 male, will have to tell my son 28 male, that his new girlfriend 35 female's child might be mine. Original post, there was no cheating involved whatsoever, I would never do that to my own son. He's only been seeing her for about 4 months from what he's told me, but she and I dated 2 years ago. But it ended because I was going to be traveling out of work for months and we just lost contact. She has a one and a half year old son that is very likely my child. My son told me the father isn't involved, but hasn't given him any other details other than it's just her raising the kid. I was the one to connect the dots as soon as I realized it was her. You can't imagine how unbelievably awkward the first time meeting was. Thankfully it was with other family members around, but she was just as freaked out as I was. This can't be kept a secret though. If this is my child I need to know. And as much as it pains me to put my son in this messed up position, he needs to know too. He's coming over later on so we could talk. I'm beyond nervous I really don't even know where to start explaining something like this to him. Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Man, that's not how I would have guessed this story would end. Good luck with breaking the news. Hopefully he takes the news as you intend. I don't expect him to react rationally. It's such a messed up curveball to throw right at him, but I hope eventually he is able to understand this happened before they got together and can process the news in a healthy manner. Maybe you should do a paternity test before spilling the beans. Sounds like your son's girlfriend has a type. I would never be able to cope with the fact that my girlfriend, or wife, dear God, had been with my dad. About 10 years ago, I caught my dad and my ex texting each other. It made me feel ill, literally. I would maybe try and confirm with the girl alone first then take it from there. No reason to mess anything up if it's just a misunderstanding. We've talked briefly about this after I made the connection. She says he's mine, but according to her, was worried I might not want to be involved since I was gone for work for who knows how long. Not an excuse to keep this information from me but it's done now. I'd still like to get a paternity test done just to be absolutely sure, the math adds up, but it could also be she was seeing others. Who knows, but that's why I want the test so there's zero doubts. How did your son take it? What a messed up situation. Poor guy. Whatever you do, please don't get back with her ever. I haven't spoken to him yet. He's coming over in a few hours so we can talk. Edit to update on this since many of you have asked. Yes, my son knows everything now. The conversation was not easy at all. My son was very confused and upset, as would anyone honestly. I expected him to yell at me, but the shock was too much for him to get a strong reaction, but he was still very serious. I made sure he knew I'd understand if this is too much for him, so whatever he needs from me I will try to do. As of right now he just needs some space. And I said in another comment, that after our talk last night, he messaged me about going over to her place so he can hear this from her too. As far as I know they have had their own talk, but not so sure about where they stand now. He didn't talk to me all day until he sent me a message earlier telling me he loves me, but he's gonna need some time to himself, which I completely understand. It's not gonna be something he will easily get over. As far as paternity, well we still don't know anything about that. I have communicated with her about finding a place where we can get this test done and out of the way, so we'll be doing that this week. It can't wait any longer, otherwise, it's just gonna drive me crazy. Now for the second and full update. Apologies for taking so long to update on this. There really has been a lot going on, but I'm taking the time to finally get back to all of you after your amazing support. It was a strange situation to be in, so believe me, I'm glad to have gotten the positive feedback and reassurance that I did. So yes, if you saw the update, I included that my son does know now about everything. He needed a little time to himself, and they did decide in the end to mutually break up. They both knew it wasn't worth complicating things more down the line when they haven't been together that long. My son did admit to me he was a little sad about the relationship, but he's glad I told him before his feelings for her grew to love. We didn't talk much for almost a week because he was having a boy's trip with his close friends, and then he needed a little time to get used to all of this information. The good thing is, we are talking again normally, which I am so grateful for. Seriously, it worried me how much this would affect my relationship with him, and I'm happy he's been so open about his feelings. He tells me it's still crazy how all this happened. He told me he's accepted it though, and might try dating again in another few weeks. It's not all perfect, but at least we are talking like we always do though. And more than anything, I'm so happy he didn't hold what happened against me since none of us knew about this until we all had dinner. Now for the part I know lots of you wanted to hear about. We did that paternity test, and the results did confirm her son is also mine. Part of me just had a feeling he was anyway, but it didn't hurt to just know for sure. We have been communicating more and I've taken the time to come over to see him almost every day. 
He's not wary of strangers. In fact, he's been pretty friendly, so that has really helped with trying to bond with him. Not my first rodeo as a dad obviously, but I still feel like I'm learning everything all over again after so long, and especially after missing so much time with him already. I've been able to hold him and play with him with his toys which is a blast. It's just the fact that I have another son that I'll get to experience many new milestones with. Always makes me smile. My son knows about his half-brother now. He told me he'd like to meet him at some point in the future, when it doesn't feel as weird. He never met him before that, like I explained in a few comments, because they hadn't been dating long enough to introduce him. My son thinks it's kind of nice knowing he has a brother now. Again though, he told me he is going to need more time to adjust before he's comfortable with officially meeting him, and I understand that completely. So yeah, it's been quite a ride so far. You can imagine how busy it's been with a new kiddo to bond with and raise. We are currently working with a lawyer to get all the legal things set right away. I want to make sure I have my rights as a father and get my time with my son if she ever changes her mind about being compliant and decides to shut me out of his life again. That's all I have as of right now in terms of an update. So I hope this answered some of your questions. I believe, because this didn't involve any sort of betrayal and you were honest with him, your relationship with him will recover. Yes, that is what I hope for too. And with time that he is also able to have a relationship with his younger brother if that's what he would like. The best part is that you were fully honest. I mean he could be angry or lost, but not on a long term. I mean, what could he have blamed you for? For having an intimacy or love life. It's a full surprise for everyone involved. And I am sure that later your youngest son is going to full super glad that everyone knew to be an adult and act both in his and his brother's best interest. Man, that is really one tough situation. Looks like you'll just have to wait out on this one for your son to calm down and process the situation. All the best wishes towards you and him. All I can do for now. And obviously be there for both my sons. He's taking his time to process and I'm glad he's going at this at his own pace. Best of luck to you and your sons going forward. It's going to be wild interacting all together in the same room with the mother. I think the most important relationships are you and your sons so put all your focus and attention on those. And I wish you nothing but ease ahead. This is a wild situation. But I'm happy for the sake of that little boy. You sound like a loving and responsible father. I'm glad you both haven't been robbed of a relationship and all the bonding that goes with that together ahead. Live on and well, I hope your eldest can heal well too. Sounds like you raised him well too. I can't even imagine how he must be trying to wrap his head around all this. Hope going forward things pan out well for you. Thank you for updating us all. Glad it worked out as best it could have. You were honest, upfront and responsible. Hopefully that's a great example for them both too. Now for the last story. Am I the idiot for only paying for my son's wedding? Plus update. Original post. Hello everyone I have been going through some trouble recently, and one of my kids told me about this place, so I'm here to ask you all for help. She also mentions that I should probably tell you guys I'm on mobile. Okay I am a 57 year old male who has 3 kids, 30 male, 27 female, and 25 male. Me and my wife have paid for each of my two oldest's weddings, which covered dress, suit, bridal parties. Or if they wanted to have a destination wedding, we covered guests who couldn't afford it, as well as the honeymoon. Now, there was no budget placed on them. My oldest wedding total was around 85k, while my daughter's was around 120,000. My youngest is getting married, and him and his soon-to-be wife don't believe in big weddings, and total is around 20k. Now, my kids didn't know how much each other's wedding costs were, as I didn't share, and I guess they didn't see the need to bring it up. So the problem came up this past weekend. My soon-to-be daughter-in-law was talking to my daughter and my oldest son's wife about their weddings, and I guess the totals came up. Now my youngest son and his fiancé are demanding I write them a check for the difference for a down payment on a condo or house. I refused and stated I was only paying for their wedding, and now they are threatening to disinvite me. So, am I the idiot? So, it has come up so I'm adding this here from the comments. I paid for all my kids' college costs. On top of that, they each have trust funds that got released at age 18, 25 and 35. He has more than enough for a down payment if he wants to. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Treat your children equally. Why wouldn't you? I'd say give them a wedding gift of $50,000 and let them decide if they want to stay economical and have a fabulous honeymoon or put a deposit on a home. Why penalize them for not being extravagant? Do your other kids agree they should get something more equal? If so, that's a definite you're the idiot. Otherwise, a soft everyone sucks here, since they shouldn't be threatening to disinvite you. It's a pretty daft move on their part though, because if they disinvite you, then your obvious response would be to not pay for any of it. Also, good god, $120,000 on a wedding. To be able to even consider that just blows my mind. 
Equality has different forms. He was treating them equally by paying for the wedding that they wanted. I tell my kids I treat them fairly, not equally. I use the analogy of dance shoes. At one point, all three of my kids did dance. One of my kids outgrew her dance shoes in the middle of the season. If I treated them equally, I would have bought all three kids new dance shoes at that moment. Instead, I treated them fairly and only bought new dance shoes for the kid that outgrew hers. This made things fair in that all three kids had dance shoes that fit. This dad is treating his kids fairly by paying for the weddings that they chose. He doesn't need to treat them equally. You can't keep track of every dollar you spend on your kids to make sure it is completely equal, because different kids want or need different things. You're not in the wrong. I have been paying for my children's college tuitions. My first two are debt-free. My third turns around and says, I don't want to go to college, I'll just take the money. I laughed. I said the money is for college and college alone. She said that's not fair. To which I said, life is not fair. Get used to it. It's your money. You get to make the decisions. Do what makes you happy. The only thing that will stop me by outright cancelling the wedding is all the people whose businesses will be affected by it, as Dave already finished the preparation and the date is fast approaching. So pay the vendors and tell them to donate the food, decor, venue etc. to a charitable organization. I work for a non-profit. Someone dropping a fully paid for fundraiser into our lap sounds like a dream. I didn't even think of it. This might be a good option. Thank you for the advice. And now for the update. Hi everyone. I would like to thank you all for your help the other day and wanted to address a couple things. It came up that I offer my two oldest the option of a wedding or house down payment that had to be paid back when they got their second trust fund, and not the youngest. I wasn't trying to hide that, I just didn't see it being of any importance. You see, my son and soon-to-be daughter-in-law didn't ask me nicely for the money, but demanded it, and then gave me an ultimatum. So, I'm sorry if that affected your judgment. So on to the update. We had a family meeting Sunday night. Me, my wife, my oldest son, my daughter and my youngest. After talking for a couple hours, we got to the heart of this. As many of you suspected, it wasn't my son doing it, but my soon-to-be daughter-in-law. She never wanted a small wedding. She dreamed of horse-drawn carriages actually. When I think about it, she wants something like out of Cinderella, but didn't want to plan it, so when all was down and over with, they had a total of 20k. Which she thought was a lot, until she started talking to my daughter and daughter-in-law about their weddings, and realized what she could have had. After that, she pulled my son to the side and started nagging him to either postpone the wedding so they can make it bigger, which truth be told I wouldn't have minded, or demand I write them a check for down payment for a house, that my son clarified during this meeting he did not want. My son hates the idea of living in the suburbs and not living in the city, not being there for all the hottest spots, trends, bars, restaurants. He's also chosen to live a child-free life, and I'm not upset about it. So it also turns out she was the one threatening to disinvite me from the wedding, and this caused her family and friends to turn on her. My son plans to call off the wedding. He said he thought he was ready to be married, and maybe he's not mature enough yet. He apologized to me and his siblings for how all of this turned out. We're on good terms, so he doesn't have to worry about that. This was Sunday night, and as of last night, she officially moved back in with her parents who have called me to apologize. I think I'm going to go with one of the commenters' advice and donate everything we have planned for the wedding to someone else, and give all the vendors extra money for the inconvenience. When my son is ready to get married again, I will pay for whatever wedding, big or small, that he wants. So that's the update. Thank you all again. Yikes. Money is always trouble, particularly with family. At least the youngest is taking this as the red flag it is. I hope things end peacefully. I don't understand how anyone could think that giving different kids varying amounts of money was ever going to end well. If the first kid had wanted a 200k wedding and the second wanted a 20k wedding, and said to the dad, so, can you give me the 180k in cash, or? It appears that the dad would have been like, um, no, we give wedding money. If you want more money from me, plan a big wedding. I got the feeling it was a learning process, and kid number three gets the most up-to-date version. But honestly, if the kids want a $20,000 wedding, holy crap that's a lot of money, then they should be allowed to. It's the demanding more that makes it not good. I get the impression that if the kid had asked, there would have been something to come out of it. But per the update, the problem solved herself. Note the mention of trust funds too, it's not as though the wedding is the end of the money. If you're in line for a few million, are you really going to get upset that kid number two got a few thousand more for their wedding? The problem didn't solve itself. The family found a convenient scapegoat in the fiancé, but the underlying problem hasn't been resolved. OP feels comfortable supporting his kids unequally in a way that is probably hurting feelings, 
And I bet that if the next wedding only clocks in at $20,000, that will cause bitterness and resentment again. OP's son's fiancé was right to feel like something here was off, and the family should resolve that. I agree. The end result here is it seems like the kid is basically punished for not wanting a bigger wedding. That if he wants the same amount that was spent on his siblings, he should go for extravagance and is being actively incentivized to blow the money, as opposed to putting it towards what he really wants. At least, that is how I would feel in his shoes. Dad really should have just set aside X amount for each sibling and then let them decide how to spend it.